In today's topic, we're going to be focusing on the entrepreneurial mindset. And within that, we have three objectives that we'll be addressing today. One is really defining that mindset. Two is differentiating that from traditional managers and administrators. And three is looking at the role of personalities and stress and teaming as related to influencing factors on entrepreneurial success. Within the mindset, the key element here is to recognize that not all entrepreneurs are the same, but there are certain characteristics that are commonly associated with successful entrepreneurs, and we'll explore those in turn. But we'll also talk about the dark side of entrepreneurship, and with that, we'll look at various pitfalls and risks associated. As far as who are entrepreneurs, we certainly see some elements that are related to independence, commitment, uh, perseverance, a willingness to work hard that are common in entrepreneurs. And while entrepreneurs, again, differ uh, by many different factors, there are certain personality traits that tend to emerge that are uh, assistive in starting and launching new ventures. Entrepreneurs also have a strong optimism. Uh, they recognize that their ventures are going to be wrought with risk and that the chances of failure may be high, uh, but that they see that opportunity, they seize that opportunity, and they believe they can achieve that goal. There is often a competitiveness there as well, uh, that they want to naturally uh, succeed in what they're doing. And at the same time, they're not afraid of failure, and they see that as a learning tool as well. And fundamental to that, our perception is that entrepreneurs do cause entrepreneurship. Now, there may be opportunities that emerge. There might be changes in technology, changes in regulations, changes in economic factors that may present opportunities. But ultimately, it's up to the entrepreneur to recognize and seize that. And there are many different factors associated with that that we'll explore in the course. Uh, these include innovation and what you can do to invent and commercialize ideas, uh, planning and goal setting, uh, taking risk, uh, incorporating feedback and incorporating customer feedback very early in the process, making decisions relatively quickly and with incomplete information, uh, human relations, particularly as related to social capital and networking, and then also this element of independence and what does that mean in an entrepreneurial context. When we talk about type A personalities, there is sometimes a belief uh, that entrepreneurs have this chronic sense of urgency, that they are very involved and are consumed with their venture, that they neglect everybody and everyone uh, unrelated to work, uh, that they feel they are the only ones capable, and that they are very explosive and tenacious and aggressive. Uh, while these might be characteristics of type A personalities broadly, when you look at a psychological definition, I can say in my experience and as well as the research of others that entrepreneurs come in all types. Uh, there may be some sense of urgency. They do want to act on their opportunity. Uh, they may be consumed with their idea to an extent and that they do spend a lot of time and energy working on it. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be at the risk or at the consequence of everything else. Um, and in that context too, when we look at entrepreneurs, uh, they do vary uh, quite broadly as far as personality. So there's no one right type. There is also an ego element that is sometimes associated uh, with at least the perception of entrepreneurs um, and that they are a win at all odds. And I can say too that that's a bit of a myth. Um, you know, while that might be the case for some uh, and that entrepreneurs are a subset of broad society and that, again, there may be people in society that behave in such ways and so you would expect that a subset of them that are entrepreneurs behave in such ways. It's not universal, it's not a requirement, uh, it's not the norm. Um, entrepreneurs instead do have this quest for creating their own venture, a willingness to sustain that venture, and a desire to be involved and to achieve and to meet the needs of their customers. In looking at entrepreneurial mindset here, I think it's very effective to look at the individual components of that and to think about each of the individual characteristics that are common among successful entrepreneurs. The commitment, determination, perseverance is one that we've noted previously. Uh, related to that is the drive to achieve. Uh, there's an opportunity orientation and that is really more the analogy of where others see problems, entrepreneurs see opportunity. Uh, they are aware and looking and thinking about opportunities and are willing to act on them when presented. That they do take the initiative and responsibility, that they don't wait on others to solve a problem if they believe that there's an opportunity to solve that problem themselves. And that there's a level of persistence and that not everyone may like your idea to begin with. Not everyone may support your concept. Uh, many people may not invest in your idea. 
uh, one of the early ventures I was involved with was a nonprofit startup in the education space, and we wrote 27 grant applications before we received the first grant. Uh, so in that way, again, had we stopped on the first or second, we would have never achieved the 27th. Um, so in that way, uh, there's certainly that drive, there's also that persistence, and there's also that recognition um, that if you're doing something that's truly innovative, uh, not everyone is necessarily going to buy in on that to begin with. There's also a willingness to seek feedback. Uh, many times, if we have a business plan, we may be afraid to show it to others. If we have a business idea, we may be cautious of talking about it. Uh, there's a fear that it may be stolen. Uh, there's a fear that somebody else is going to capitalize on that. Uh, there are a couple of elements to think about there. One, I certainly would not suggest posting a business plan broadly online for anybody to read, but people that you trust, people that are in your circle, people that um, or of reputation or that you have an affiliation or a relationship with, encouraging their feedback will help you identify pitfalls, will help you identify gaps. I believe will do more to improve your opportunity than to lose that opportunity. And we also encourage you to seek feedback from customers very early on. Uh, don't wait until you have a product built before you show it to a customer. Go out and validate that the problem you think they have is indeed the problem that they have. Uh, that you understand what they currently do to solve those problems and that you have a good idea and a good definition of the product or service you want to design and you validate that with the customer uh, before you go through and build something that in the end no one may want or not enough people may be willing to pay what you need them to pay for for the product to be successful. By internal locus of control, what we mean by that is with an internal locus you essentially attribute a success or failure internally to yourself. Uh, with successful entrepreneurs, they don't necessarily blame things on the economy or blame things on competitors or blame things on customers. They take ownership, they take responsibility, uh, they recognize that there are other factors that may be outside of their control that may influence their success or failure, but ultimately they attribute success or failure to themselves and they work with the resources that they have, the relationships they have, and the abilities they have uh, to make their venture a success. Tolerance for ambiguity is certainly central as well. Uh, within that, it's essentially just being comfortable with change and comfortable that markets evolve and customers evolve and competitors evolve and you have to make decisions even with a very changing market. And you have to take risk in that market. You have to realize that there's an element of failure that may emerge and that you have to still keep that energy level high uh, for yourself, later for your investors, for your employees. And if you're not excited about your venture, and if you're not working hard for your venture, it's unlikely that others are going to do that. Creativity and innovati innovativeness, we kind of use those terms a bit in concert here, and that we encourage you to look at successful entrepreneurs and recognize that they are typically doing something unique. They are typically doing something rare. They are typically doing something that's differentiated from what's in the market and not developing me too products. Vision certainly plays a large role as well. We'll speak about vision, confidence, optimism, and independence as that's differentiated from traditional managers a bit later in the lecture. Teaming we'll also talk about as well. It's a bit of a myth that entrepreneurship is typically a solo practice. Uh, in reality, it's very much a team game and a team sport, and we'll talk about what that means as well. So when we differentiate managers from entrepreneurs, what we mean by managers are individuals that may be working within a typical corporate setting, uh, that may be working within a typical environment that is a big company um, big government, things of that nature. Entrepreneur, we're contrasting that as in the individual responsible for creating and launching and managing the venture. So managers do a number of things that are important, that are valuable, uh, that provide an element of planning and coordination and organization that are central. Entrepreneurs may do many of these manager aspects. There's certainly a need for budgeting. There's certainly a need for strategy and motivation. But entrepreneurs need to add to that to be an entrepreneurial manager to be a visionary, to seek opportunities, uh, to not be constrained by the resources that you have today, but think about what you can do to enhance and grow your resources tomorrow, and that they're adaptive in that and comfortable with change. And when we look at the various attitudes of traditional managers versus entrepreneurial leaders, there are a number of elements here that are important to recognize, and you have the opportunity to later go back and view these or pause the lecture uh, to review these in detail. Um, but this gives you some comparison and contrasting to go through and really understand what's the difference between a traditional manager and an entrepreneurial leader in a variety of aspects that include business purpose, strategy, 
uh, the focus on the customer organizational learning. Uh, so I encourage you to take some notes here or to pause the lecture uh, to review these as well. The dark side of entrepreneurship is something that's not commonly talked about. It's not necessarily popular to put in press or articles or magazines. But it is important to recognize that uh, many entrepreneurs are taking substantive risk in their venture, that they are investing uh, their personal money in their venture in many cases, and that at some point there might be a signal that the venture is not working. But, however, because there's time and money that's already been invested, there's the temptation uh, to do what I would call throw good money after bad, meaning that even when the venture is showing signals that perhaps it's time to, to close down or stop the venture, uh, there's the draw and the temptation to keep putting money and time into it. And so it's important to recognize uh, when that stop gap uh, may be necessary. There's also that career risk and that loss of security. Uh, that's something, again, that's very much to the individual to decide what's an acceptable level of risk. There's a family and social risk, and there's a recognition there of competing commitments. Uh, there is various schools of thoughts associated with when's the right time to start a venture. Uh, many entrepreneurs will start their ventures in their 30s and in their 40s by age, and that's fine. I would encourage people to do it you know, as soon as you can and as young as you can. And in that way, again, there typically um, are fewer commitments or fewer financial commitments or fewer family commitments for younger people. And in that way, there are, uh, let's say, a window of opportunity perhaps in your 20s that are prime times to start ventures. Um, if you're beyond that and if you um, have been waiting for the right time to start a venture, I can probably tell you there's not a time where you're going to have uh, tremendous free time or tremendous idle money. Um, and it's really more of a point of where you are in your career and what the opportunity is, uh, what the position that you have is, and really what your worth it factor is to step out and take that risk. There's also a psychic risk as well and recognizing that failure is a real possibility and be, being sure not to over leverage yourself. Um, we like to take risks, but we like to take calculated risk and we like to again know that we're stepping into something that is worth it for us and again that varies by the individual. Stress is certainly a key element to think about too and it's again part of that mindset of recognizing that stress is real and it's significant and it's something that entrepreneurs who are successful find a way to manage. And they do that in a variety of different ways. One is certainly talking with other entrepreneurs that may not be in your market space or they may not be competitors but they're dealing with the stresses and the strains of developing and running a venture and with that meeting with them and talking with them informally is a great tool for recognizing you're not in it alone and other people are experiencing what you're experiencing. There's a element of communication, delegation, of finding satisfaction, vacationing, exercising. And again, we experience stress in different ways and things that we already do. So I would just encourage you as you begin to start your entrepreneurial journey, think about what works for you and what are effective stress relievers within that. Teaming is certainly a central element to think about as well in starting your venture. Uh, you may want to go it alone, and there are certain benefits of that. Uh, but what we'll find beyond those benefits is that there is benefit in teaming. Uh, there's benefit in having complementary skills, deeper knowledge, expanding that network of relationships. Typically, you need a team for high potential companies in that if an investor is going to invest in a company, they want to see a company with multiple executive team members and not just a single person. So in that way, it provides more legitimacy, more stability, and continuity if you should uh, fall ill, if you should want to go on vacation, uh, that there are other people around you that can successfully lead and manage the venture. And by complementary competencies, for many ventures, particularly technology ventures, we see a tech person and a business person. And that often works well. I uh, would discourage you from starting a tech venture without any tech capability. Um, even though you might be able to outsource it, you may be able to find a temporary supplier. If that's a core competency of the organization or the company, uh, you should have internal staff or a partner uh, that's skilled in doing that if that's not your forte. And beyond that, there are a variety of other individuals that play a role in our entrepreneurial success and there are members of our extended team. Um, so I would be thoughtful in as far as the selection and the inclusion of them within your planning and within your venture creation. 
So in summary, we've looked at a number of things. Uh, we've talked about the entrepreneurial mindset and how that's central to success of the new venture. Uh, we've differentiated traditional managers from entrepreneurial leaders. And we've talked about the aspects of personality, stress, and teaming as key influencers of entrepreneurs and their entrepreneurial success.